Never a dull moment. What's going on, guys? It's me, and we got a game to talk about, so here I am. But before I even get into all that, we had more drama this week with Derek Coleman getting involved in a hit-and-run accident, and, you know, of course, when I heard about it, I assumed the worst. I read the report, and it looked like the worst. It looked like he may never play football again, or he'll be out of football for some time. But... After all the facts were released, it looks like, I don't know, we'll see. But the point is, he's not going to jail. It looks like they're just, they understand that it was an accident, it was a freak thing. So, yeah, <clears throat> not going to have him this weekend. Don't know if we're going to have him moving forward, but it's a relief to know that the worst is not the case. So, just to push all that out of the way before I start talking about this game, um, pretty much a must-win this weekend, hosting the 4-0 Carolina Panthers. Obviously, it's not technically a must-win game, but you're giving yourself no room for error if you drop this game the whole rest of the season. You might have to win out if you lose this game. So, to me, this is pretty much a game you have to find a way to get it done. The only thing... I really know about my team right now is that they need to go out there and get the win this weekend because the other things on this team that we take for granted I, I don't know right now I need to see it a few times before I feel good about it again now for this game the defense I mean they they're in all kinds of problems right now it's not just the blown leads it's I mean They've got injuries on all three levels of their defense right now. The good news is that this Carolina Panthers team, their receivers are not going to challenge our questionable cornerback depth. I mean, we've still got Marcus Burley out. Jeremy Lane's not back yet. Um, you know, Deshaun Sneed's out there. And Sneed's been playing good, but he was probably the sixth cornerback going into this season. Obviously, Harold Simon's on injured reserve. He's not coming back. But... Going to war with three good enough cornerbacks, not going to kill you against this team. I mean, you know, they're trotting in here with the likes of Ted Ginn Jr. and um, Devin Funches. I think I'm saying that right. Uh, Kevin Norwood, our old boy Kevin Norwood. Jericho Cotchery, and I think they still got Philly Brown. I mean, those are not receivers who are going to make you pay throughout the course of a game to where you're like, man, I wish we had good receive. I, I wish we had good cornerbacks. So I trust the guys that we have tomorrow to take care of business there. That's the good news. The bad news is we have a lack of the expected players elsewhere. And this Carolina team, they've got a real good tight end in Greg Olson, and we know what tight ends do to us. I mean, you know, Tyler Eifert probably just scored another touchdown against our defense as I'm making this freaking video. But the last couple years, tight ends have been murder on us. Cam Chancellor is part of the problem. Uh, the linebackers are part of the problem. Everybody on that defense, they have a problem with it. Greg Olson is good. And this Panthers team, they don't have one dominant running back. I mean, their starting running back is Jonathan Stewart and... He's not what he used to be. He's still pretty good, but it's not like he's having a dominant season or anything. But as a team, they run the ball very effectively. For, in most part, because they do the same things that we do with Russell Wilson. You have a quarterback who runs. They have a quarterback who runs. They have multiple backs. I mean, they still have Mike Tolbert, and he's a underratedly big part of what they do on offense. And because they have a guy like Cam Newton... It takes one more guy out of the play. I mean, whenever they do the read option or whenever they do, you know, basically any type of handoff, the, you've got a defender who can take himself out of the play because he's thinking, what if Cam keeps the ball? Or you can reduce it to a one-on-one -on -one situation where everybody but one person thinks that the running back got the ball. You let Cam keep it. It's one-on-one, -on -one, and Cam can win that matchup. And... Yeah, they have an intimidating rushing attack, even not as good as it's been in the past, but it's still intimidating. Cam, he's not the best quarterback in the league or anything, but he is a tough matchup. He's big. He's got a big arm. He, you know, the things he can do with his legs, the power he can run with. There aren't quarterbacks who play like Cam Newton. 
Although there are obviously many quarterbacks who are better, he's still a unique matchup. So this is not the game where I want Bobby Wagner to miss. But Bobby Wagner, he's 50-50 right now, might play, might not. If he does play, who knows how much he can play and how good he can be. Uh, Kevin Pierre-Lewis, who would be the first linebacker off the bench, he will probably play, but it's not a guarantee. He's still recovering from an injury, and he didn't do much for me in the preseason. I know he's a good player, but the preseason, he didn't impress me at all. Um, Brock Coyle, 50-50, and he would be one of the backup linebackers. So if Bobby Wagner can't go... Brock Coyle would go if he's healthy. So we might be hurting at the linebacker position. It might be K.J. Wright and Bruce Irvin and, and uh, Mike Morgan. It's it's not cool there right now, and this is not a game where I would want to face that possibility. And defensive line. Frank Clark, I don't think he's going to play. Looks like he's just a little banged up. Jordan Hill's obviously out for this week and the next week. Going to miss at least two games on his part. <clears throat> and Jordan Hill's been balling this year, so we know how bad that is. Um, Demarcus Dobbs will probably play, which is good, because we just need a warm body out there because of all the other people who have gotten hurt. So, yeah, this is a game that's going to be won in the trenches and to be missing some of our front seven guys. I'm, I'm, I don't like it. So, Cliff Averill, Michael Bennett, uh, Brandon Meebane, um... They're going to have to step up and handle it. Ataya Rubin, all those guys. Demarcus Dobbs, if he plays, is going to have to play beyond himself to get this done. And I think they'll find a way to do it. But the defense might not be the dominating unit that you would like to see. I mean, so far this year at home, they've given up three points. So we might not be seeing a defense that plays at that level tomorrow. So we're going to give up a few points, I'm sure. We're going to give up more points than maybe we would usually expect. So I need the offense to pick it up big time tomorrow. Two weeks in a row, the offense has left the defense out to dry. And if I see it again, if I see this offense hang the defense out to dry, like they did against Detroit and Cincinnati, um, one, the season will be pretty much on the brink. And two... I'm going to start saying that we need to make a change at offensive coordinator. Or we need to maybe put Mark Lowinski in there in Justin Britt's place on the offensive line. Or maybe something else. I'm going to want to see a change if I see that again. I mean, it, it, it's starting to get a little ridiculous. I mean, last week and the week before, second half, offense didn't do much of anything in either of those games. And we lucked out and won one game because the defense bailed them out, and then we couldn't get it done the next week. It's too much to ask. I mean, you got to pick up some first downs. you got to get some drives going, especially in the second half. This Seahawks team that I know is a second-half team. They up their game in the second half of seasons and the second half of games. It hasn't been happening so far this season. And last week it bit us. And the week before, it almost bit us. So... We need the offense to show some signs of improvement because the offense is healthy. The defense, they got injuries. If they don't play as well as I would like them to, then I get that. They, they've got, they're missing guys. What, what do you want? But the offense, the only two guys the offense is missing who have any impact at all would be Derek Coleman, who's a fullback, and, you know, Will Tukoff, who he, he can contribute. I, I don't doubt that. And Paul Richardson, and we'll talk more about Paul Richardson later, but bottom line is Tyler Lockett is basically Paul Richardson, almost, except he's better in every appreciable way. So Paul Richardson's a number four or a number five receiver, and not really an impact guy. So, yeah, offense, get your shit together, put up at least 24 points tomorrow, and we should be able to get this done. I feel good about it. It's not going to be easy. That Carolina team, they're getting Luke Keekley back. We'll see how well he plays and how much he plays. So running the ball is going to be tough. They've got two linebackers over there in Keekley and Thomas Davis who are very good in coverage. So that's a tough ask of Jimmy Graham. Um, you know, they got Josh Norman over there who, in terms of measurables, reminds me a lot of Richard Sherman, and he's had a great start to the season. But 
at the end of the day, the number one thing I'm looking at is this Carolina defensive line, which has been completely mangled as of right now. I mean, obviously they lost Greg Hardy in the offseason. They, they didn't have him last year either. But yeah, Charles Johnson is uh, not coming back until later this season, and Jared Allen is out for this game. So in terms of pass rushers, they're down to Coney Ely. This is the worst pass rush we played all season. I'll just go ahead and say that now. Um, in terms of the guys they actually put out there on the field, this is the softest pass rush we will probably play all season because they're missing some of their guys. So they're not going to feel bad for us, for our injuries, because they have some too. And this offensive line, which played a lot better last week, but played a terrible game against a terrible Detroit pass rush, needs to show me something against these guys who are just going to be warm bodies out there, basically. That's what I'm looking at. Offensive line, if you guys hold up and you can hold down a bad Carolina pass rush, like you did last week, pretty much. If you do what you did last week, you'll be good. We can do this. We can get this win, 3-3, three and three, put ourselves on track for two very winnable road games. And I'll know a lot more about where this team is headed after tomorrow. So... I'll make the video after the game, probably. Um, I'm fixing to watch this uh, Oregon game. It's coming up in a few hours. And um, that's what I got. See you guys later.